Lou Hoover, a forgotten first lady. You've heard of first ladies such as Martha Washington, Abigail Adams, Eleanor Roosevelt, Laura Bush, or Michelle Obama. But America has been blessed with many other talented first ladies as well. Today, perhaps we can take time to learn about one of them, Lou Hoover. Lou was smart and very good at hard subjects. She was the first woman to earn a degree in geology from Stanford University. She could speak five languages, including Mandarin Chinese. She even knew Latin, which is so hard that no one really speaks it anymore. In fact, Lou once earned a prestigious award because she translated an important book about mining from Latin into English. But Lou didn't start out that way. She began as a normal kid, just like you. She was born in Iowa, but her family moved to California when she was about 10 years old. She was a tomboy who loved hiking, camping, and playing sports. Lou got a good education, but thought she would go straight into teaching. Back then, girls didn't really go to university like boys. But Lou heard a talk by a Stanford professor in 1894. She knew she had to go to college at Stanford. And she did. Lou studied geology at Stanford, but she also met Herbert Hoover. Bert, as she called him, was immediately captivated by her whimsical mind, her blue eyes, and a broad, grinish smile. Lou and Bert got married and had two sons. They also traveled a lot when they first got married. Bert was a mining engineer whose work took him to China, London, Egypt, Australia, and many other places. Lou had many interesting experiences. The Hoovers were in China when a rebellion put them in a difficult situation. Nevertheless, Lou was a leader in medical efforts to help the wounded. Later, in London, Lou took classes at the London School of Mines. During World War I, Lou worked on war relief efforts. Lou was always helping others. When Lou finally returned to America, she continued to give. She helped establish the American Women's War Relief Fund, and she went on speaking tours to help war relief efforts. Together with her husband, she encouraged Americans to conserve resources and to do without certain scarce items during the war. These ideas were so well known that they were called hooverizing or hoovering. Later, Lou took on other projects such as helping the founders of the Girl Scouts and broadening opportunities for women to be involved in athletic sports. Lou's husband was elected president in 1928. Now Lou was first lady and she could do even more to help. She treated all races and cultures equally, inviting a variety of people to the White House. She drove her own car, which women didn't always do back then. She sometimes wore pants instead of a skirt. Women didn't wear pants much back then either. She helped women to get better working conditions. Over and over again, Lou made life just a little bit more free for American women. Lou helped many people when she was first lady, but she wouldn't let newspapers report on everything she was doing. She wanted to help other people, not get publicity for it. She helped our veterans. She helped the American Red Cross. She helped those who needed food and clothes. Lou personally helped boys and girls who couldn't afford college. When she discovered that one part of the country didn't have a school, she helped start one. After Lou passed away in 1944, someone was cleaning out her desk. They found a stack of uncashed checks. People were grateful and had tried to repay Lou, but she wouldn't accept their money. Are you beginning to wonder why Lou Hoover isn't as well-remembered as some of our other First Ladies? She should be. 
She was quite a woman. Thank you for listening to today's History Moment. I hope you enjoyed this story about an admirable First Lady of the United States. For more history snippets for kids or adults, please join my Facebook group, my page, or my website. Thanks, as always, for loving history with me.